Welcome to the Total Motorcycle Bike Shed, where today we will have a review in motion of the Cardo Pack Talk Bowl Dynamic Mesh Communicators. The Cardo Pack Talk Bowl Communicators are the top of the line, state of the art communicators that aim to raise the bar for ease of use and retail price. At just under $360 US each, they are significantly more expensive than Cardo's own Freecom 4 communicators recently tested on TMW. We were interested to find out if they would provide anything substantially better than the aging Cardo G9s that we purchased several years ago, and we will discuss our findings on the ride video that you're about to see. Because we wanted to capture the actual audio from the Cardo PackTalk units, we managed to pair in our Bluetooth action camera to capture the audio as we heard it on our video. Our results and our findings are from an extended 3,000 mile or 5,000 kilometer ride to the Yukon Territory where we experienced all kinds of the worst weather uh, you could possibly imagine and, uh, and put the Cardo PackTalk units through their paces. Please be sure to check the TotalMotorcycle.com website for our full written review of the Cardo Pack Talk Bold units. This is uh, Total Motorcycle testing the uh, Cardo Pack Talk Bold units. We're heading just west of Calgary uh, this afternoon and trying to beat some rain clouds here. Hopefully we get uh, lucky with that. We've had these uh, units for uh, I guess a few weeks now. We ran them almost to last. We got turned back by weather and uh, done a lot of evaluation with them and found them uh, actually very high quality and very effective and uh, reliable. So one, of the, uh, one of the strange things we can do with this uh, set is we can actually uh, we can pair in a Bluetooth camera. So right now I'm using a Cena Prism Bluetooth camera and uh, which I have uh, which I've paired my communicator to and then I've uh, opened up what's called the DMC bridge so we can uh, so we can capture voice from both of us. So that way, it's easier for the uh, for the viewers to see what the recording's like and, and how the voice is on the other end. So, say hello, Jennifer. Hello. All right. So it's also interesting in that it picks up absolutely no background noise when we're recording with the camera set up this way. So the internal mic on the camera is not on, and we're just getting whatever comes through the Bluetooth communicator. So. That's why it's deathly quiet when we're not talking. Normally, if we're running without the camera, we can both stream music, which we usually do. And uh, so we'll just stream it off of our phones. And then when we communicate, the music uh, levels will just drop down and uh, while we're speaking and then automatically come back up when we're done, which is uh, a massive improvement on the old communicators that we were running, the Cardo G9s. And, uh, it actually takes the edge off uh, a lot of the long days we were doing riding up to the Yukon. Which surprised me actually, because I thought the music might be dimmed in the background when we're talking. I thought it might be distracting to our conversation, but really not at all. Yes, you can carry on a conversation through your ABBA, no problem. <laughs> That's right. That's another fortunate thing is that Jen can listen to her music and I can listen to good music. Yes, we have very different tastes in music. And actually, uh, we were both riding different bikes when we went up north. Jen was riding a Honda CBF 1000 with a larger fairing and I was riding an Africa Twin with a similar size fairing. So I guess today we'll see if the uh, lack of wind protection affects the mics uh, in a negative way here. We have done a little bit of testing on uh, when we were both riding naked bikes earlier on, and we did have a few issues with the uh, sound quality, but a lot of it was to do with the microphone placements in the helmets, which we've optimized, but sometimes we bump them when you pick up your helmet by the chin bar. Today we're good. It is a bit of a windier day, which will also affect it somewhat. So here in a few minutes, we're going to be heading down a couple of back roads, and uh, the speed limit's slightly less. The scenery is a lot better than this construction zone that we're in here getting out of Calgary. And, uh, and yeah, we'll test them out there.
So, Jen, what is the most positive thing about uh, these Cardo PackTalk Bold communicators versus what you're used to with the old Cardo G9s? What, like, now that you've had a chance to use them for a couple of weeks, what are one or two of the, the really positive things you see with them? Well, for me, the biggest thing was in the other set, um, as soon as we were finished talking, the mic wouldn't cut out right away, so I could hear a lot of wind noise, um, and I could hear your engine and stuff until it, until it kind of cut out. These ones are automatically quiet. So the minute we stop talking, it's just quiet. I don't hear any wind noise. I don't hear any background noise, not, nothing from your bike or anything, um, which is nice for me. I, I, it was distracting almost hearing so much noise in between when it cut out and when, like when we were done talking and when the mic actually cut out. This is just seamless. It's just quiet. In fact, sometimes it's so quiet that I actually think I've lost you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like uh, but, just... Which Just is really, really today. nice. Yeah, um, no, and the other thing for me is the, the music. Like, you know, being able... I didn't utilize that on the other set as much. Um, but th the way that it just mutes or kind of quiets down in the background when you're talking and then right back up when you're not talking to, uh, to be able to enjoy your music, I really like that. Yeah, those are two really good points. The uh, the first one you were talking about there with, uh, you know, dropping off as soon as we finish speaking um, is really nice, but when we were running the old Cardo G9, when those, uh, when those finally did disconnect quite often, we had a hard time getting them to connect yeah. again. Yeah, and, I, uh, actually with the other set, I had a really hard time initializing communication when we lost, when we got too far apart. I actually virtually couldn't do it. It had to be you who made the contact again. Maybe I potentially just set it up that way. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I did not. That's just how they worked. Uh, in those cases, it seemed like uh, well, one communicator, similar to this, uh, like in our Pack Talk group, there's like one, uh, I forget what it's called, but the, uh, I guess the administrator or the leader, and then uh, they add people to the group. But uh, these are so much more seamless for reconnecting. And uh, that's another big thing. When you get out of range, before the other communicators, when we got out of range, it was so difficult to reinitiate again. It, it was distracting. It was somewhat unsafe. And these just so seamlessly just pick up the other person that, uh, you know, you have, you, you, we've just lost that huge distraction that we used to have. Yeah. I, feel, I feel it's a lot safer now than the yeah, old I, I believe so, too, actually. Yeah. Because you don't have to push a button, you don't do anything. As soon as we get back in range, it automatically links back up. The other part you brought up about streaming music, I used to do that uh, with the older communicators that we had, the G9s, but uh, the sound quality was so poor. Again, we run earplugs all the time when we ride, and... Um, yeah, we're just going to turn left here at 37th, okay? Um, so we run the earplugs uh, every time we uh, ride, and then, uh, of course, with the uh, the lower quality, lower output speakers, the older systems, they were, uh, um, the, the music quality was just very, very low. And then, of course, when you did initiate the intercom, you completely lost your music, and then when you were finished with the intercom, you'd have to manually reinitiate the music and uh, and it's just so seamless now. So a lot of little minor things add up to a lot more uh, a lot more enjoyable uh, experience, I guess. Absolutely, yep. I actually had my mind uh, somewhat made up when uh, we were offered the chance to evaluate these. The price point was just way too high. I couldn't justify it because. Uh, you know, what we had works good enough, um, you know, especially for two people. Not so good for the large groups that we often lead and tail. But, uh, you know, it uh, it seemed like we were getting by okay. But then again, you don't know what you're, uh, what you're missing until you get a chance to uh, utilize it. And I'd say now for uh, what we've uh, uh, experienced here, they're definitely worth it.
Yeah, I would say these are far superior. Yeah. And like you say, it is, it is, it's not one massive difference. It's a whole bunch of small improvements that yeah. make all the difference. Yeah. So, the uh, of course, you can go for the Freecom 4, which is not a DMC uh, uh, style intercom. And they, uh, the retail is 250 per unit US uh, for those units. And, uh, and if you just look at the incremental step change to the, uh, to the Pack Talk Volts, we're 360. So it's an extra $110 US, which is nothing to sneeze at, especially if you're buying two units. Um, but I would say they're worth it. Also in the fact that the quality seems very, very high. And, uh, you know, we have experience with uh, the Cardo units before where we had, I guess, an initial quality problem with the G9s when we got them. And then they, uh, um, they initially, uh, they, took, they took them right back and replaced the unit. And we've had very few problems with those considering the weather that we've ridden through with them, the, uh, the dust that we've ridden through with them. Uh, or myself, I do a lot of adventure rides with, uh, with groups. And so, of course, it's very dusty. Uh, taking it right to the north slope of Alaska and back, a lot of gravel and dust up there. And really all we had to do with the G9s was uh, clean the contacts every now and then where the, uh, where the communicators uh, interface with the base on the helmet. You know, another thing that I have to say as well is if you do need support or help or anything like that, Cardo is very good at responding very quickly. Yeah, when we were, uh, I was trying to troubleshoot this uh, this whole pairing in the, uh, I guess, the Sina Prism camera. Of course, okay, so we've got as a competitor brand uh, camera, uh, even though uh, Scala is not in the camera business, but uh, Sina, of course, is in the communicator. I was trying to pair their camera in and then uh, open up this uh, DMC bridge. And we had it going initially, and then it... Uh, and then it failed on us, and we lost the voice uh, the very first couple hours of our trip, and we were never really able to get it going. So I sent them a note, like use their uh, use their online help form, and when we stopped for our next gas stop, there was already a response, and it was very detailed and helpful. And actually, they said that they knew that it was an issue that they are working on, and uh, they're working on a, I guess, a uh, an update to the uh, to the software. And then also potentially a hardware fix uh, that can be retrofitted to make it work. Uh, since then, though, uh, actually managed to get it working uh, somewhat reliable without all the features that we could normally use the uh, uh, of the Pack Talk Fold. But at least we can uh, we can show the viewers how our voices uh, are transmitted and uh, and recorded. And uh, I think you'll see on this recording that the uh, the quality is quite decent considering we're down the road different times here. Right now we're going like 95 kilometers an hour. Nothing too quick, but uh, you can get the, the gist of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just they, their, their support is, is really, really good. Yeah. Any, any issues we've ever had with Cardo, their response is excellent, actually. And of course, there's, there is uh, much cheaper communicators on the market. And of course, there's the... Uh, the Chinese type ones that are coming in, and they're always tempting. Uh, Chinese stuff is always tempting because of the price point, but uh, I have had so much bad luck with it that, uh, you know, if you're just going to waste your money, you might as well uh, save up a little longer and get something that's going to last and, uh, and keep you happy for many years. Which are our other units, like, I mean, still going strong. Yep. I don't still know how functioning. many. Functioning, yep. I don't know how many years we've had them, but it has to be at least six or eight. I think. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. And a lot of uh, travel miles on the Many line. miles, yep, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, had we not been offered the chance to try these, we probably would have just gone merrily along with, uh, with what we had. Yep. I apologize for any rain that's on the lens of the uh, camera right now. I'm just trying to dodge this cloud and uh, hopefully we find some sunshine where that blue sky is over on the other side here. Calgary 2019, and why we really struggled to get uh, get any kind of footage of our uh, review of the, of the uh, Cardo Pack Talks is just the weather's been so uh, 
so crazy. I, I guess not even just Calgary. We saw it all the way to the edge of Alaska. So. Yeah, not good luck with the rain and cold. As we'll see here, though, coming up, uh, you know, we saw ourselves uh, on video here just a few moments ago coming out of Calgary and uh, all the construction and uh, the city that it is of, I think, 1.7 million people and uh, maybe not quite that much. Uh, it's been a while since I looked, but, uh, um, you know, we're, we're really like 10 minutes away from the edge of the city and we're looking at the foothills here. We got a nice little... Uh, a nice little uh, narrow uh, laneway here coming up to the foothills. It's going to be quite a pretty ride. And we'll probably see, uh, let Jen spool up a little bit in front of me. And uh, and we'll get, uh, you know, what it looks like when uh, we go out of range around like a corner. We lose line of sight. And then when we come back in range and how we can reconnect. And uh, if you've used other communicators uh, of, the, uh, of the older style, I really appreciate how well that works. My favorite signs ever in construction. There is a lot of construction. Line corner always worries. and fairly wide on this one. A little bit rough road, but at least I have lots of suspension. Yeah, mine's a little rougher. Yeah. Yeah, you still love your monster. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Jen, I'm going to let you just slowly away from me here, so, okay. and uh, and we'll keep talking and we'll, uh, until we lose uh, line of sight and probably lose uh, connection periodic or just momentarily, and then I'll uh, we'll demonstrate how they reconnect. Sure. A rough spot there. Yes, there is. Sometimes when I come out here after work, I'm just uh, thankful. Oh, there we go. I've lost Jennifer, so she's gone out of the line of sight. We'll see when she's back in. That happens before the rain shuts down my camera. Hello, Jen, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, did you hear the connection uh, get lost when uh, we lost yes. line of sight? Yep. Okay, and that's how simple it reconnects again, which is just... In fact, in fact, I didn't even know that we had lost it until I tried to talk and you didn't answer, but there's no... It's just absolutely ceaseless. You don't know when you've lost it and, and it just connects right back up. Yeah, and the uh, the range actually too. Like, I mean, the range is, is good. I mean, it's not uh, exceptionally better than what we've had before, I don't think, but... We get the benefit of having, uh, with the reconnection happening so quickly, the range is as big of an issue. I've lost you again. Ah, okay. And I hear you now. So, again, yeah. there we were just briefly out of line of sight, lost each other, and uh, reconnected. All right, Jen, you can still hear me up there? Yep. Okay. And just like any other uh, Bluetooth communicator that uh, the Cardo sells anyway, having the antenna up makes a makes a big difference in the range. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something we didn't discover on the first one, the first set that we had, the G9, until a little ways in, but it makes the world of difference. Okay. I am really slowing down now to just let you spool ahead and... Uh, just going to prove out how far these will go. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, very so clearly. You are uh, disappearing rapidly into the distance, so I can still hear you until you go on a line of sight. Can you hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. Okay. And there I lost you just out of sight. So you can see 
uh, with the camera still being on, you can see that uh, you know the range is more than enough in a straight line. Now I get the fun part of catching up the Jen. Are you there, Jim? Yes, I'm here. Big connection there. I'm here. Yep, I hear you. Okay. There's a car coming. Okay, thank you. Nice perk of the units as well. Not sure if uh, the little uh, loss of connection prompt comes in on the camera or not, but I'm hearing a little beep every time Jen disappears. There's no yeah, problem. I heard, a, I heard a little beep that time too, but uh, I'm not, I didn't the first time. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit more about the sound quality of the JBL speakers. I guess when we first got these units, the physical size of those speakers was uh, was kind of surprising and uh, concerning because uh, I, I can recall having issues getting the old speakers set up and they were roughly about half the size, half the physical size. And I thought, how are we going to make these things fit into our helmets? And I think initially I, I did have some problems with mine. I don't know about yours, Jen. We're, we're yeah, I had the same thing. They just were in the wrong position the first time I had them on. When yeah. I pulled my helmet off, my top my ear was all red and it was really uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. But I found I just moved them down and forward a little bit, and now I don't even feel them. They're super comfortable. Yeah. The, the quality is obviously there. I think they uh, they will sell you a set of these speakers that will reconnect to some of their old communicators, uh, not our G9s, but the G9X has actually, I believe, had a jack that you could run either headphones or different speakers. and. Uh, so for a $90 upgrade to your existing G9X or higher, um, or even some of the initial pack talks that don't, did not come with the uh, JBL speakers, it is totally worth it. They are so, um, I guess, well, much better than the old ones. That, uh, it's just night and day. It's like going from an old uh, uh, AM uh, car stereo to a nice, uh, beautiful FM uh, uh, receiver with, uh, you know, some sort of, it's definitely, uh, definitely worth the dollars, and even big, uh, spend of the car Cardinal Backdock Bulls, just buying the speakers for an older unit would be something to consider. Yeah, just as you were talking there, you were cutting out a bit. Okay. Ah, Right. So they're not. So now straight. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to go straight right over to uh, Highway 22X. Okay. Or we can even go past that, and uh, they chip sealed it last year, and we'll take our chances that it's good now. All right. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, voice control. And uh, and how that works for us now. Um, big big change in how it used to work. Uh, the uh, the G9 that I put in our initial uh, product review on our preview on the uh, PMW, I mentioned how the uh, the voice control was so bad. Basically, no matter what we said, uh, it would just say radio on, and uh, it would give you a blast of either a radio station or static if you're outside of the radio station range. It was super annoying, worked on it uh, as much as I could, although I admit not being a techie, found it massively aggravating and just shut it right off. Um, these units, uh, I guess, I find myself still using the buttons in that it's so simple to do. Um, unless I have something going on and uh, and I'll just give it the, uh, the voice command by saying, uh, hey, Cardo and then stating something, and it will, uh, you have to say it with a little bit uh, more assertive voice, just like you would, uh, you know, hey Google, or, or uh, hey Alexa, but... Uh, I'm going to go straight here? Yes, that's right. It's a little bit bumpy, so, you know, we'll just take our time.
So yeah, the voice commands are very effective and uh, probably should use them more. Um, well, you know what, though? That's a good point, is that the the buttons are so easy to press. The other ones, I, the young ones on the G9, I felt they weren't raised enough with a gloved hand. They were a little bit hard to distinguish which button you were pressing. These ones are really easy to use. And raised of course, is very simple. Good. Yeah, of course, there were six buttons on the uh, G9s, and there's only three on here. And initially, when I looked at the buttons on these things, I thought, man, they're so small. Um, you know, are they going to be easy to use? But they're further apart. They're really easy to orient, uh, orient your fingers to. And uh, and so, you know, there's a few different sequences you need to use to, uh, you know, initiate your mobile phone or initiate the music. And uh, they just work so easy. And... Uh, Sometimes I use it just to initiate my music and and uh, next track and things like that. Uh, I'll just use the button so you don't have to listen to me uh, make my commands on the intercom. Yeah. Yeah, that automatic reconnection as well when we do do our uh, a lot of our uh, I guess our meetup group rides that we. We, I often lead and you also often tail. We get separated, which happens quite a bit. We have larger groups. We try to split into smaller groups, but sometimes we just don't have people who are willing to lead and follow. We get separated at a light and things like that getting out of Calgary. It's a little bit of tension, you know, just trying to try to reconnect again and not sure where you're at and, you know, if you're in the mirrors or not and, and uh, I'm trying to madly push buttons and, uh, and initiate the conversation with you with the G9s, these just take that stress right away. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, you know, and uh, because we've been, uh, we have been on the road traveling uh, since we've got these communicators for most of the time, and then this past week I had to actually cancel three group rides because uh, of terrible weather, we haven't had a whole lot of time to try to pair in. Uh, we have some friends with some competitor brand uh, communicators, and, uh, and uh, we were going to try to, I guess, try to hook everybody up and just see what we could uh, get working. And, uh, of course, we've, we've run short of time on that, and uh, we do want to get this review uh, early enough in the year that folks uh, may uh, still be shopping and uh, deciding on what to buy. Longer term, though, we'll probably do a little bit of an update on, uh, on how that works. Yeah, for sure. I'm actually excited to see it work and uh, get a few more people involved with this and uh, maybe uh, make things a little bit more flexible. I imagine with all the uh, dead space we're not talking uh, in the audio behind, I'll have to try to figure out how to edit the music in or otherwise just apologize to people for it being kind of, uh, kind of quiet and boring in the background. <laughs> Yeah, of course, different people use the communicators different ways. Typically, uh, usually every year we take a trip with uh, Jen's brother who uh, has a G9X that we're all hooked up with. And uh, quite often uh, those two will uh, on for hours chatting on the road and uh, and I actually uh, just drop out uh, sometimes, and uh, especially if we get uh, Jen set up as the master. And uh, I just drop out and enjoy the silence while those two enjoyed the conversation. So. Well, we don't often see each other, so it's our chance to catch up. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming left here? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, we'll take, the, we'll take this over to the... I guess the prettier side of it here, and then uh, hook up with 762 and come back around. Probably also be doing uh, a series coming up for TMW about uh, great rides uh, where we live, and uh, you know just provide a few different uh, little overviews, uh, some videos, some discussion about different places that we ride, and I think that would be pretty interesting. Testers across uh, TMW uh, contributing uh, because I know some of them uh, live in some very cool places like uh, Eric and uh, Carrie. 
quite spectacular. So, for some yeah. reason here, you're cutting out on me. Okay. It could be the wind. Uh, I noticed we just got a, a larger shot of wind coming at us here, so that Maybe. might be part of it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm doing the same thing, but just occasionally, every 10 words or so, a couple of words will turn up. Okay. Well, I'm probably rambling a little bit quieter as well, especially given the wind noise. So usually when the, the ambient wind noise picks up, you have to talk a little bit louder. Yeah, actually, I can hear some wind noise in, your, in my ears now. Yeah. Yeah, I do have a bit of an issue with the uh, the chin vent on uh, on this Arai helmet that I'm wearing. It's uh, a little bit broken, so it tends to uh, bleed a lot of air in too. It might be a little bit difficult to see in the video, but the uh, the wind is definitely picked up here now. Again, we got some pretty crazy weather happening, but uh, it's not raining, so we're riding. Yeah, that's, that's been the theme of this summer so far. It's not raining, we go and ride. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Sure. As I was saying, I'm a man of few words sometimes, so... Yeah. I was noticing that uh, you seem to be enjoying your little uh, Ducati after spending a couple of weeks on your touring bike. I am, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that uh, bike just seems to fit you. Um, this bike. Today I'm loving this bike again. It's like possible to be selling it. Yeah, now with, uh, I guess with the wind noise uh, that we have going on here right now, and uh, maybe it's because you're on the naked bike, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you right now, Jen. Oh, really? Yeah, that's better. Okay, I'll just talk a little bit louder. Okay. There is definitely a bit more wind noise than we Of course, we haven't had the chance, uh, or I guess, or maybe the willingness to test these communicators with an open face design helmet. It is possible to put them in uh, in that. Uh, however, uh, for us, um, really not an option with an open face helmet. We're kind of uh, kind of stuck to our uh, full face helmet design. And uh, having crash tested an Arai helmet in the past, I'm a I'm a massive fan of getting the best protection you can get. So, I imagine with an open face helmet there would be uh, quite a bit more uh, issues with the wind. I would think. Yeah, often on a beautiful summer day out here, you will see uh, hundreds of bikes. So yeah, they're already scared. I'm actually very surprised. There's hardly any. Mind you, the motorcycle parking is underwater, so... <laughs> that's if they just all went home. Can't park yeah. anywhere else. Well, just, no. Just no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, okay, where do you want me to park? Or do you, you want me to park? Are we going to uh, just... Uh, just go ahead and find a spot that you think is good, and then we'll just uh, pull over and just wrap this up a little bit here, and then we'll go in and we'll review the video and make sure it actually worked. Yeah, anywhere but that spot. I'm kidding. Why? I'm kidding. What's wrong with this spot? Nothing. So. All right. So that's our uh, that's our video footage, and I'm hoping that uh, we maintain our communication with the camera throughout, and hopefully that provided a good overview to everybody of how the Cardo Pack Talk molds will work out in the wild. That said, uh, we're out of here. Say goodbye, Jen. Bye.